Hello, everyone. Welcome to Developing Palettes. I am Aaron Lewis coming to you from the Drew Estate Studio. And with me today coming to you from the Pestania Studio is John McTavish. How you doing? Good, man. It's been a it's been a hot minute since we've done a twofer. We're usually doing, you know, three fur at the the minimum. A yep. twofer has been, I want to say like six or eight months. It's been a while. Yeah, it has been a while. Uh, tonight we are talking about the West Tampa Black Toro, uh, cigar is six inch by 50 comes out of the Garmendia factory in Nicaragua. Uh, wrapper is Ecuadorian Habano. Finder is Nicaraguan Ometepe. Uh, filler is Nicaraguan Condega Viso and Esteli Lajero. Uh, blended by Rick Rodriguez. Price point is $9 and 99 cents. Uh, cigar was released in June of 2022. And, uh, with that out of the way, John, take us to your overall experience with this cigar. All right. Well, the uh, first third opened for me with a combination of kind of a smoky tobacco, which kind of sounds like a weird thing to say, but like, you know, it's not straight tobacco. It's almost like a, a, a fire cured tobacco, but not fire cured, if that makes any sense. So there's some earthy undertones, um, soft baking spices, wood. Uh, it was kind of interesting. It was an engaging combination of flavors. I, I'm not sure I've gotten recently a little bit of just sweet raisin and tobacco at the front of the draws. It progressed, which is kind of nice. Um, so, you know, the first third to me was, was certainly, I think did enough to, to elevate it to the good category. Uh, second third got going with baking spices, wood creaminess, little dry wood. And then, um, as sometimes happens on profiles, it just kind of became wood forward. So baking spices kind of fell to an accent note and it really was just smoking, you know, wood with a little bit of earth. So I was like, well, that doesn't really do it for me. And then the last third, uh, opened with creamy earth, baking spices, and uh, a little bit of light spice to finish. And then earth just kind of took over. So the story of this cigar was first third was complex. Second third was wood forward. Last third was earth forward. Doesn't really do it for me. That was pretty average overall for me. Uh, I did have a little bit of an issue with the burn. Um, you know, I, sometimes I worry I'm smoking too slow, but in this case, two hours, six minutes is about right for a cigar that size. So it went out in the last third and I feel like that's not a me problem. Uh, and the draw had slight amount of resistance to it. Um, so I had to dock a little bit for the resistance, but yeah, overall a little disappointing. Um, I, I was hoping for more. What about you? Yeah. For me, the structure with lightly toasted Oak, uh, earth and light black pepper, got a faint cocoa powder that kind of joined in a little bit later. Uh, second, third saw an espresso bean note join in. And then the final third saw the cocoa note apart and the toast level kind of ramped up. Um, I thought the cigar had kind of an average flavor profile throughout. Uh, that never really kind of elevate, elevated itself to really capturing my attention. Um, the notes that were present were pleasant, um, but they just didn't like, you know, they just didn't all harmonize, I guess is the right way to say it. Um, yeah. But kind of the overall dryness that I was getting from kind of like the second, third on kind of negated those flavor components, I guess. So it was like something that was just kind of throwing it out of balance that just wouldn't let it kind of do its own thing. Um, flavor wise, I thought this was on par with the white. Um, I just had better construction with this version than I did with the white. So this scores a bit better, uh, but you know, flavor wise, it was, they were pretty much identical for me. Um, but I, I don't really see it as something I'm going to come back to. I mean, it's, you know, right at that $10 price point, but I, you know, there's still cigars in this price range that, um, can present a, a better flavor profile. So it's not, you know, overall, it's not something that I really be in a rush to come back to. Um, so getting into the scores, uh, John was uh, ahead of me uh, a little bit. He gave a 5.75, I gave it a 5.65. It's really just, uh, you know, he liked the first third a little bit more. So how that 5.75 match up for you? Yeah, that matches up well. And, it, you know, I think um, sometimes our viewers don't understand, you know, when we give it a five, that that means that technically there's nothing wrong with the cigar. It just means that, you know, when it lands in that five range for me, when I see it in the humidor, I'm just going to pass it on by because there's 75 other cigars that are equivalent in flavor profile and maybe equivalent in price point. So it just isn't memorable for me. And that's not a, no a knock. It, it It's fine. Technically, it's just I'm looking for something that elevates it, something that's engaging and five, seven, five for me matches up pretty well. Yeah, my 5.65 matches up well, uh, you know, average flavor profile throughout really good construction uh, on this sample. So that's nice to see. Mm. But um, it seems like there's a bit of inconsistency with the construction yeah. to the various cigars uh, from this brand out of that factory. So uh, that's a bit of a bummer to see. So you don't really know kind of what you're going to get out of the box, I guess. But um, hopefully that improves over time. Um, do you have any final thoughts on this one? 
Yeah. And it's tough to know, you know, with, with the launch of a new brand, it's possible that cigars, you know, sometimes cigars shipped out early because they don't have enough time to meet deadlines. So maybe, you know, if they sat on the shelf for a few months, I mean, we have heard some retailers say that they've been flying off the shelves and they haven't had any issues. So, you know, it's the luck of the draw. We're not really smoking a large sample size here. So it's tough to tell. Uh, I don't think Rick's having any trouble selling these. So, you know, I think by the time the PCA rolls around, we'll have a conversation with them and say, you know, did you have any feedback? Was there any issues? Were me, were we the outliers? Um, But, you know, I'm looking forward to the attic series, which is kind of the sort of next 2023 project that he's got coming out, which will be interesting. Yeah, I got that one. And then uh, I think they also now have announced that there's going to be a, a red uh, version oh, of this that's coming out. So I think that's hmm. maybe a little bit later in the year. So we'll have to see kind of how this shakes out. I mean, brand new company pretty much from last year, uh, already with four blends. So we'll, have to, we'll see lot. how that, that goes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but I mean, he's, he comes from that background where it's like kind of pumping out new releases on a consistent basis. So he's probably used to kind of that, that format. So yeah. All right, uh, wherever you're catching this video, be sure to like and subscribe, but check out the full written review on the website, developmentpalace.com. Uh, follow us on all the social media channels, and you can catch all of our review recaps on podcasts, so iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll catch you on the next one. West Tampa. <laughs>